Chapter 9, A Changing World. The Big Question. How are our lives today affected by things people created or invented during the Middle Ages? We're going to read this chapter in two parts, half today and half tomorrow, so by the end of tomorrow you should be able to answer the big question, how are our lives today affected by things people created or invented during the Middle Ages? The Middle Ages lasted for more than a thousand years. Wars occurred, kings and queens ruled, and a deadly disease killed one-third of the population of Europe. People lived their lives, seasons came and went, and history was made. Those days are long gone, but the people who lived long ago have touched, on, touched our lives. Many ideas, laws, inventions, and important decisions made in the Middle Ages still affect our lives today. Certain key events helped define the Middle Ages. You have already heard about many of them. The Hundred Years' War is another. This war began when one man claimed to be the true king of another land. This time it was the English king, Edward III, the great-great-grandson of King John. He claimed to be the rightful king of France. The Hundred Years' War was not one war, but rather a series of military encounters that began in 1337 and ended in 1453 CE. Between the battles and sieges were truces and negotiations and periods of peace. Here's a scene from the Hundred Years' War. When this war began, France was probably the most powerful kingdom in Europe. People did not expect this war to last long. The English, however, made good use of their skillful archers. Many of these archers used long bows. This powerful weapon helped the English archers defeat the French knights on the battlefields of France. One good example was the famous Battle of Agincourt. On October 25, 1415 CE, a mighty French army faced a much smaller English army. The English archers with their longbows could not be overpowered by the French soldiers. Although this was indeed a great vi victory for the English, France won the war in the end. They held on to almost all of the lands that the English had hoped to control. Out of wars such as this one, a stronger sense of nationalism developed. People fought and died for their king and for the land they belonged to. Here's a map. It says the outcome of the Hundred Years' War was that France held on to a great deal of land. The green is English territory. The blue is the French territory. You can see where these little dots are, are cities. And then everywhere you see a sword is where there was a major battle. Joan of Arc. France won the Hundred Years' War. This might not have happened if it had not been for the bravery of a young girl. Her name was Joan of Arc, and this is her story. Here is a portrait of Joan of Arc from the 1400s. Joan was born into a peasant family in eastern France in 1412 CE. She lived a simple life. She did not go to school and never learned to read or write. During her childhood, the Hundred Years' War was raging. The mighty French army had not been able to defeat the English. This war caused hardship and poverty in France. When Joan was 13 years old, she began to have visions and to hear voices. Joan believed that God was speaking to her. These experiences continued for several years. When Joan was 17 years old, the English burned her village of Domremy. Joan heard the voices again. This time she believed that God was telling her to lead the soldiers of France to victory against the English. Here is an illustration of Joan riding into battle. Joan traveled to a nearby town. There, she told the governor of the town that she had a message for the Dauphin. The Dauphin was next in line to the French throne. Incredibly, the governor agreed to allow Joan to speak to the Dauphin. Joan convinced the Dauphin to give her a sword, a horse, and some soldiers. She was able to free the town of Orleans from English control and help to ensure the Dauphin was crowned King Charles VII. But in another battle, Joan was captured by the English. She was accused of being a heretic and was found guilty in a trial. As a punishment, she was put to death. And here it was where Joan um, was captured by the English army. Um, a heretic is somebody who disagrees with the um, common um, religious beliefs of um, most people.